you know, practice it slowly. Maybe you only get to 90 degrees at first. One of the things that makes this difficult is the hip rotation. At a certain point, the hip stops, and then I have to keep going with the leg there, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So you can give that one a shot. So I get asked all the time, what can I do to improve my balance? Well, I'm gonna give you a few drills today on how you can improve your balance, and I'm gonna show you modalities that we can use to help us increase our balancing abilities. So let's get started. The first thing is just basic standing on one leg. You can do this anywhere, anytime. Uh, some of the time I will actually do this. I've stood in front of like in a line at a bank before and I just kind of stretch and I just sit here and hold this position for a while. That alone is going to help you with your balance. Uh, it could be really easy for some people. It could be hard. So that's the first one. If you want to take that same thing up a little bit, what we can do is we can actually just raise up onto uh, the ball of our foot, raising our heel up off the ground. Try balancing like this for a while, and you will notice it is significantly more difficult to just balance on the ball of your foot than it is on your entire foot. So that's one thing that you can do. It actually helps a lot because a lot of the kicks we do, we end up pivoting, right? Pivot. When we pivot, we pivot on the ball of the foot, which means we have to have that balance while being on the ball of the foot. So that's a great one you can do. The next kind of step up, uh, it's actually a step down from on the ball of the foot, but it's a step up from just balancing. And you can do this one on the ball of the foot too if you wish. And it's just opening the hip, just like this. So my base foot is staying relatively stationary at this point, and I'm just opening up my hip. Pretty easy, right? All right, so the next thing that we can do is just go through the chambered positions, the chambering positions. So our first chambering position is the front chamber. It's just like this. Our next chambering position is gonna be the roundhouse. Now, I show this one kind of at first with a just a 90 degree um, so I'm kicking this way, my toes are off 90. I can actually go with the round all the way back. So now my knee is pointed 180 degrees away. And then I can come all the way back to the front. Now, that one is significantly more difficult than the other one. So, you know, practice it slowly. Maybe you only get to 90 degrees at first. One of the things that makes this difficult is the hip rotation. At a certain point, the hip stops, and then I have to keep going with the leg there, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So you can give that one a shot as well. One of the last ones, uh, some people call this a Romanian deadlift. It's kind of like that. It's a single leg toe touch. So there's a few different ways to do this, but essentially what it looks like is this. I'm going down and back. Now you can keep the base, the non-base leg straight as you do it. You can bend it as you do it. And you can also bend this leg as you do that as well. I actually like to do these in between um, like squats. When I'm at the gym and I'm doing squats, I'll do these in between sets because they help with the little stability muscles, but it's not going to be something that really wears me out a lot like if I was doing more weights. So it's a good one to kind of add in to your regiment there. Again, you're just going here, stick the other arm out as a counterbalance and then come back up. If you want, you can go from this position, back, and here. And those are pretty fun ones. You'll start to feel the burn uh, at the bottom of your foot quite a bit just from having to balance. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is just some of the modalities that we can use. So, as you can tell right now, I'm on mats. These mats are about two inches thick, which means they wobble a lot. They're made for jujitsu, so they sink in, which makes it a lot more difficult for me to do balancing things. If I was on concrete, it'd be very easy for me to do a lot of these things, but these make it even harder. Now, I have another mat, and I can, so this is the exact same thing that I have down. It's just a piece cut off, and I can do these balancing drills here. And now, since I have less surface area, I'll have more wobble as I do it, and I can practice some of these same exact drills. I've got that. I have a foam roller. They have half foam rollers you can use. You can use a balance disc. Either way, with something that moves completely out from under you like this, I don't recommend doing a lot of the more difficult ones. I would just recommend doing something like a balance in case it does slip out from underneath you. You can kind of just catch yourself if you're in one of these positions here and it slips out. It's a little bit more difficult. And then you've got these half balance balls or bozu ball, whatever you want to call it. You can practice it this way where the hard surface is up. 
You can practice whatever you want. You can practice any of these drills. It moves around quite a bit more. Or you can practice it, obviously, with the ball portion up doing the exact same you know, drills that I had just showed. And they make them significantly more difficult because the ground underneath you is moving. So go ahead and give that a shot and you will see your balance improve.